Classroom of the Elite Volume 7.5. Let's get into it. This is during the winter break, so no soliloquy and no special test. We just get to experience Enya Koji, Kawazawa, and others what they do during their break. Enya Koji has a date with Sato on Christmas Day. We know in the last book he told her that he would go out with her, he would spend time with her during the break. And Enya Koji wants to know since he lacks common human emotion when it comes to love. Since he was in the white room, he wants to know if he's going to be able to fall in love with someone. Karuzawa had changed. Her past wasn't really keeping up with her anymore. She didn't really care about it much anymore. It still lingered a little bit. However, she had grown. Um, her face was feeling hot. Her chest was being tight. And that she was beat red. And guess what? She started falling for Anya Koji. And she's like, well, okay. He, he caused me a lot of pain, so why am I falling in love with him? She's like, she's a little confused. And so what else happened, she looks at herself in the mirror. We know that she was bullied. She has a lot of scars on her body, especially one on her stomach. It's a very deep one. And she's like, well, women, they're supposed to have soft and delicate skin, so nobody's going to like me like this. However, and Yukoji, he didn't look at me in disgust. He looked at me like I was a normal person, so maybe he doesn't find me disgusting or repulsive. But she's like, wait, this ninja touched me when we were on the ship like she was going through it she's basically contemplating does she like him or not and then she gets something on her phone it is sato she is supposed to meet her so she meets up with sato at the cafe sato is asking for her advice how she can make the perfect date with enya koji because we know that karuzawa and hirata are the perfect couple or like the only couple in the series we know that they're fake and karuzawa is like okay well, what the heck do you like about this dude? Karazawa, she shows some jealousy. Um, Sato, every time Karazawa brings something up, he's like, no, I like Enya Koji. He's he's handsome. Um, I don't want people knowing about him because of how great he is. He's calm, mature. And she's like, well, you know, I want, you know, you have Harata. Nobody else is going out with anybody else because everybody's childish in our class. So let me have this. And Karazawa, she attempts to name other people. Like I said, Enya Koji is ranked fifth among all the uh, first year students of how um, how hot they are, their uh, handsome rating or whatever. And so with Sato, she's like, man, let me have this. And don't let it, don't try to discourage me, all right? I finally found a nice person. So Karazawa agrees to give her advice and they're walking back. And Sato's like, I'm nervous. I ain't never been on a date before. So will you go on a double date with me? And so they plan out the date and Karazawa agrees, but Karazawa, she's kind of BSing. She's putting up a front because she ain't never been on a date before. She ain't never even held hands with a guy before, so she don't know what she's supposed to do. But she's going to wing it and try her best. And I said try her best with an... I, I want to put an asterisk on that. You guys will understand what I mean later in the video. But Enya Koji, he calls Karazawa. He's like, hey, can you let me know any more about Sato? Because Enya Koji, if it doesn't work out, he doesn't want to like, he's going to put in 100% effort and actually try to see if they can work out. So he wants to know about Sato so their date can go well. And Karazawa's like, well, okay, well, why do you want to know about her instead of checking up on me? She is mad at Enya Koji because she's like, okay, with any other person, they wouldn't have forgiven you, but I have a big heart and I'll forgive you. But you didn't call, check up on me after I was drenched in the cold uh, water and then the cold air was on me and didn't check to see if I'm sick like how could you and your koji goes to the mall to buy something however we don't find out what that is till later in the book but he runs into sanya Yanaki and kamo i believe that's her name the woman that was spying on him basically sanya Yanaki says she's gonna run the school she's gonna crush everybody specifically ichinose she plans on crushing her first and she already knows that Enya Koji took out Ruin. So she's like, after I deal with her, I'm going to deal with you. So Enya Koji's like, oh, calm down, Jamal. He's like, he's like, I don't want any smoke. I'm not I'm not really who you think I am. And she's like, well, stop putting up the facade. And she ends up leaving. And I believe it is Christmas Eve. Enya Koji decides to go to the movies by himself. And guess who he sees? Ibuki. This isn't the first time he's run into her trying to do something he enjoys. It happened uh, when he was trying to test out... Uh, fortune telling but this time Ibuki knows that Enya Koji is actually smart and physically gifted so it's a little bit awkward the movie got interrupted because of technical difficulties and so he ends up leaving Ibuki follows and Ibuki's like all right I'm not satisfied you let's fight again and she she makes Enya Koji go into this room and um, so they end up fighting and Enya Koji he just he's not really doing anything all he's doing is blocking and she's like let's go for real and so Enya Koji he's like all right if we go for real you gotta leave me alone. Like, like I beat you, so let's just move on. And Buki agrees. And then Koji beats her easily. And so they end up getting locked in the room. They have to call for help and they escape. But they did bond. And so I guess she's gonna leave him alone from now on. 
Enya and Koji was supposed to meet somebody, but they weren't there. So on his way back to his dorm, he sees Sato, I believe, Shinohara, and Matsumita, or Matsuhita, something like that. They're friends. They're not as popular as Karuzawa. However, they're like a tier below, so they're semi-popular. So they're talking about getting together with people in the holidays. I believe Shinohara, she likes um, Ike. And then they start talking about, hey, Sato, we see that you've been talking to Enya Koji recently. What happened? Sato, she blushes and gets red. And then Enya Koji's like, oh, they're talking about him. Let me dip before I notice. Because the only reason why he was eavesdropping on them, he wanted to see if he can find more information out about Sato. But he didn't get anything, so he dips. And your coach, he ends up meeting with Ruin. They talk about how similar they actually are. And Ruin, he still does not want to be any of Koji's pawn. But little does he know, he already is. And actually, this is interesting. I did not know that, well, I guess it made sense. Any Koji never experienced snow or never got to touch it. So whenever the snow was getting, like, put down on them, Ruin would dust it off. And he looked at any of Koji. He's like, well, why do you have the snow on you? And Koji wants to experience it. They also, another person comes in, it is Harita Manabu, he talks about Nagoro some more, and he brings up the vice president from class B, I believe, is Kiriyama, who also wants to take down Nagumo. Going back to book 7, talking about Suzune, Harita being the face or being Enya Koji's puppet so that she could be on the council and he can work from behind the scenes. He goes up to her and he wants to talk to her about the council, however, she's talking to Kishida and Koji's like, you're, you're with Kishida, like, what what the fluff is this? So he's like, I'm a, I'm a bounce, and Harita's like, well, if you leave now, I'll never hear you out again. So he tells her straight up, join the student council, your brother wants you on there. And Harita's like, what? And Kishida's like, what? And then Koji's like, what? Did you not hear what I said? And Harita, she calls her brother, her brother confirms it, and Harita's like, all right, there's something fishy about this. I don't, I, I don't know if I want to accept it. I'll think about it, but there's something definitely going on. We also get mentioned with Hasube. She's talking to Enya Koji and is all like, hey, yo, you got plans for Christmas? He's like, actually, I do. I'm going to be going with, out with Sato. We got a date. And so Hasube's like, you got a date for Christmas? Do you not know what that means? How important that is to a woman? Like, that means she's going to confess to you. And Enya Koji's like, well, I know, but I just want to see how it goes. And Hasube, she brings up, well, what about Ari? What about Sakura? He's like, well, what about her? He's like, are you that dense? He's like, no, I understand that Sakura likes me, but I'm free to do what I want. And Anya Koji is like, well, it only makes sense. He's the closest male friend that she has, so it only makes sense that she fell in love with her. She likes him. However, he's like, before she can go with the relationship, she has to experience life and other people. Maybe she doesn't truly like Anya Koji, and it's just a temporary crush. And after that, Sakura, she comes, knocks on the door. She gives him a Christmas present because... He won't be hanging out with them on Christmas, and it's actually gloves. And Enya Koji had never had gloves before, so he was really appreciative of it. Let's talk about this date. It was okay. Um, I, it, it was okay. So they go on the date. He meets up with Sato around 11 o'clock. She has a bag in her hand. However, she doesn't give it to him. Pause. And so they're about to go on their date. Harata and Karbazawa come up unintentionally you know well they did intentionally however it's supposed to be a double date they go on a double date and Enya Cody notices someone Karuzawa is playing it pretty well however Sato she seems nervous and he knows that they're faking this double date that it wasn't just a coincidence it was planned they go this is pretty much what the date happened they, I believe they went to the movies went out to eat and did a couple other things Basically, it's a first date, so I was you're supposed to be learning each other, feeling each other out, what they like and what they dislike. And in your Koji and Sasa, they were talking back and forth. Hirata would come in here and there, but they were trying to feel each other out, uh, what they like, music they like, what they like to do on their days off, etc. And Karazawa, every time, this is a jealousy coming in, and I feel bad. I like Sato as a character. I think she's a nice girl. But Karazawa would come in every time and interrupt Enya Koji when he would be speaking, or she would try to uh, make him look bad, say bad things about him. And Sato, she was like, no, no, like, he's nice. I like that about him, all his flaws and all that, which is really sweet. But it kind of sucks, because she was making Enya Koji look bad. And he's like, in his head, he's like, Karazawa, what are you doing? Like, he, he was getting irritated. And during the middle of the day, Nagumo actually came up to Enya Koji and he's like, oh, well, is this the person that his senpai? He looks up to, Nagumo looks up to Manabu. He's like, you challenged Manabu at the race. And I've heard that Manabu has some interest in you. So I want to see you out. I want to see what all the hype's about. And then Koji just sitting there unimpressed. He's like, 
okay, like, like you see me now, can you go, we're on a date, and he ends up leaving, everybody's shocked, but Enya Koji just chilling there, like, like, what? <laughs> In the end, Karuzawa and Arata, they leave, and Enya Koji and Sato are all alone, she confesses her feelings to him, unfortunately, Enya Koji, he turns her down, she cries, um, she still wants to be friends with him, and she still wants to, let's just say, if something where to change his mind she would want to go out again they would want to both go out on dates again but he's like you're, you're rushing things a little bit too much and she's like okay but just make sure the door is open he's like hey it's not closed and she leaves and your coach he gets a call on the phone and somebody tells him to meet up he's like okay i'll be there in 10 minutes he also notices that carver's always watching she didn't leave she was watching from the bushes and he explains why he turned us out he said it's not that she's not a nice girl or it's not that he wouldn't mind going out with her he just thinks that with his personality and how he is it basically it's the whole it's not you it's me which is true because and your coach not not everybody can handle his true personality so he's like he doesn't want sato to have to go through that he said he thinks that he could fall in love with her and they can have a good time going dates and he but he does want to experience that he wants to experience the whole boyfriend girlfriend thing um talk, talking about feelings holding hands going on dates and he even wants to go even further wants to experience how it's like in the bedroom and he says he thinks that he could do that with sato but he, eh, he just doesn't want her to be about him the guy on the phone that meet up with is um, Kiriyama, the vice president that Manabu was talking about. Basically, Enya Koji says, hey, me and my partner, Karazawa is there with him, we'll work with you. And we'll work with you to take down Nagmo. They agree and they leave. And Karazawa, she's blushing. She's like, what, 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 what you mean about partner? Like, what? Like, what are you talking about? I, I don't want to be your partner. And so... Well, she really does want to be his partner, but they end up talking about how they're going to start calling each other by their first name. She blushes even more. Um, K and Q Taka. And this is where Karazawa brings up the fact that, hey, what if I actually break up with Hirata, their fake relationship? And Inyakoji's like, well, I don't mind. Go ahead and do it. Because, we you know, Karazawa, she's starting to like Inyakoji, so she wants to break up with Hirata and choose after him. That's why she was kind of sabotaging their date a little bit. I wonder if we'll get some interaction in the later books about if Inyakoji and um, Karazawa, they go out, if Sato's going to bring that up or say something about it. I wonder. Um, but also... And Yokoji, he was like, the reason why Karazawa was so scared was that she was nervous that if he did go up with Sato, and that's also a reason why he didn't go up with Sato, is because he was considering Karazawa's feelings. He thought if Yokoji was spending more time with Sato, that she would feel like she's not as needed, not as useless, and he would leave her, which wasn't the case no matter what he did. They exchanged gifts. Karazawa, she bought something for Harata in case that they needed to show that they were going out. However, it wasn't really for her, so she gave it to him. And then your Koji, he gave her a brown paper bag, and it had cough and cold medicine. And she's like, what the fluff is this? And she looks at the receipt. It says the 23rd. I believe that's the day after that she was doused in water on the rooftop. And she's like, oh, well, she sees the date. So obviously he was thinking about her. And Enya Koji basically said that the reason why he didn't call and check up on her because one, he thought she would just try to be tough and two that well she probably didn't want to talk to him because of how she felt about knowing that Enya Koji had kind of set her up and also when he was walking back he noticed her and Sato at the cafe and that's when he was like oh she's probably fine and he also knew that they were going or planning something for a double date and Karazawa she forgives him because in actuality he was thinking about her in the end it's now the next day, they're walking back to the dorms, and Yokoji walking in front of Karuzawa. Karuzawa walking a little bit behind, blushing a little bit, and Yokoji thinks of the possibility. He's like, well, Karuzawa, she's ironically and unintentionally become one of his closest friends and allies, and he wonders if they can be more in the future. Hmm? So, pretty a good book. One of my favorites. Um, more of the slice of life aspect, which I like. I don't like everything being specifically school related. I like seeing stuff outside. Not just this, other animes like Bleach, Yu Yu Show. whenever they do stuff with school, I enjoy it a lot. But overall, pretty solid, pretty interesting. It's a great mix for what's to come because they're about to be second years. And I also have to mention that now Class D is going to be turning into Class C because they beat class the former class c with ruin and all of them in different activities and they now pass them in points but thank you guys so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe also hit the notification bell so you guys never miss out on the video follow me on instagram twitter snapchat it's on the screen in the description below thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to unleash
your potential.